James, my favorite engine in the whole world. He's so fabulous, so red, so scarlet, so... Oh, colors aren't even the beginning of him. Well, I'm Rarity, and this is my story of how I first met James. It all started on a seemingly ordinary day at my at my house, aka where my workplace is, the Carousel Boutique, where I live with my little sister Sweetie Belle. Most recently, Twilight Sparkle just told me about a wonderful place she had just been to, called the Island of Sodor, and she said that steam engines could talk there. I found that a little hard to believe. Although I didn't really want to admit it because, well, she's my friend. So, the next day, well, not the next day, but a week after, I, I got a letter from Princess Celestia. It said, Dear Rarity, I would like you to go to this end of Equestria. You are needed there. A new friend will be meeting you. Yours truly, Princess Celestia. Needless to say, I was rather curious to, to know what this place was. So, I went to Twilight's house. Could this possibly be the same place? She, she said she's been to? Twilight ans answered. Hello, Rarity, said, she said. What's wrong? What place were you talking about, I asked. Twilight let me in, and she showed me a strange-looking map that had a very funny-looking island on it. She said the last time she checked this map, it had changed completely. She said to go to that one end of Equestria and be careful. So I took my saddlebag and placed several objects I needed with me, including a lunch. I took Twilight's map and I followed the paths until I found what appeared to be a small doorway besides two pink trees and two blue bushes. I opened the doorknob with my magic, not expecting anything. On the other side were colorful swirls. However, when I stepped through, I was sucked inside. Oh dear! Oh dear! I cried. But I was long gone into the tunnel. I closed my eyes for the sights were making me so dizzy. Suddenly I landed on what felt like blades of grass. I opened my eyes. I was in a forest. I, I, I reached into the saddlebag and pulled out the map. It had changed, just like Twilight had said. I followed the map, and there and, and I finally came to a very big building. It appeared to be a train station. There were many tracks, and I saw some engines there. Among them, wait, then I saw there was one little blue tank engine standing right next to Twilight Sparkle. How did she manage to beat me there? Wait, let me rephrase that. Twilight wasn't there. She... Of course. I must have not have been thinking straight. I saw Sir Terran Hatt standing right... I saw Princess Celestia standing right next to a nicely dressed man with a top hat. And they were standing right next to a big red tender engine. Celestia caught sight of me on the small hill and she motioned, me for t she motioned for me to come over there. I did. 
when I finally got I when I finally got down there I finally got a good view of that red engine. The the red engine's eyes looked at me. Fizzling fireboxes. It's another pony, he he said. <gasps> I gasped. You can talk I said. James uh, James's eyes widened even more. Princess Celestia exclaimed that 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 this engine's name was James. He had mo he had just recently had an accident. He she told me that he used to be bright red well it used to be black. But after the accident he was given red paint. And in my opinion, I started to like him a little for for his appearance. But it was strikingly beautiful paint. So red, so vibrant. Then the man then Celestia looked over at the stout man. Well, 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 he said. You must be Rarity. I've heard about a lot about you from Twilight. I, I looked at him. I stared at him at that when that statement came. Twilight? I guess Twilight wasn't kidding about this place after all. Your job will be to help my my engine James here be all be as helpful as he can be as well as become his friend right Celestia Celestia nodded indeed she said I looked at James and he looked back at me and then he slowly let out a big smile he Oh my, he said. You're definitely beautiful. I bashfully stroked my mane. I knew he was right. Oh, thank you, darling. And you're strikingly handsome with that red paint of yours. James's eyes were very wide indeed at this one. Why, thank you. The top of hat cleared his throat, interrupting our deepest thoughts. Well, well, you might as well get to work then. So the two of us went to work. We were going to be helping this blue tender engine, Edward, with his train. Edward looked very much like it, like James, except he was blue, and well, he had the number two on his tender while James had a big yellow number five on his tender. They also had different faces. I'm a splendid engine, James said, and suddenly let out a wish of steam. Woo! I jumped back, trying to avoid some water splashing by. Oh, I'm sorry, Rarity, he said, his face going a little red from embarrassment. Are you all right? I quickly regained myself. Yes, I said. But this time, next time, be careful. You nearly ruined my cue. I'm sorry, he said. He felt a little embarrassed. But what I didn't see was that that same watcher got all of us to top of hats, new top hat. So we left the station. But James wanted to get us far away, well, so they didn't stop at the, they stopped too far away from the station. We had to reverse. Then we passed the field where James told me he had had his accident. Though, it, though now it looked like it was untouched. The fence was back to normal, and the cows were just eating grass, minding their own business. While I have nothing against cows, they can be a little smelly. Well, we were stopped at another station. I noticed that James looked worried. What is it, James, darling? 
I ask. I'm worried about Sir Topham Hatt's new top hat. What will he say? Oh, I'm sure it's nothing, I said, trying to reassure him. Though I do love hats a lot, Sir Topham Hatt's hat really didn't stand out to me. In my opinion, it was just another solid black top hat. Though I didn't say this out loud, thank goodness. So we left the station. When James and I got back to the shed, I began talking to James about where I work and how I do how I help the ponies where I'm from. James in turn told me about how he used to have wooden brake blocks and that's what caused his accident. I was horrified. You must have been badly hurt. No, I was okay. I was just battered and scratched up, that's all. And rather dirty. But look at you now, I said, gently rubbing my hoof against his slimy, shining red paint. You're like a beautiful fire truck. James's, red, James's face went red again, and I stared back at him. Suddenly, we were up by a car door slamming. It was Sir Topham Hatt, and he did not look happy. If you can't behave, he said, we shall take away your red coat and have it you painted blue. James did not like the sound of this at all. Neither did I. We didn't want to have two engines that looked like, well, we didn't want to have another engine that looked like Edward. Don't get me wrong. Edward is, is wonderful. But he's not what I really want to talk about a lot. Sorry. Well, the next morning, James was in a grumpy mood. Careful, said the coaches. I was surprised. The coaches didn't seem to have faces. But yet they still had the ability to talk. Gordon never has to fetch his own coaches, and he's painted blue, I heard James complain. I didn't like the sound of this. I knew if James was going to be in a bad mood, there would be something going wrong. So I hurried over to him. James, darling, please be in a good mood today. If you continue to be angry, you're going to make something bad happen. But James didn't seem to take notice, as he was already puffing away. Hey, come back! I yelled. James slowed down a bit for me to catch up. After a while, things weren't going very well. We're going to stop, cried the coaches. We're going to stop. And that's exactly what they did, too. We stopped further down the line. What's wrong? I asked two nicely dressed... I asked two men in James's cab. The brakes are on. Leak in the pipe, I suppose. James has banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. Really? I didn't realize he was banging anything, I said. I didn't know what to make of this. A lot of the people got off the coaches. I could tell they were terribly unhappy. What will we need to repair it? I asked. We'll need a strip of newspaper and a rubber boot lace. Then I remembered. I had a strip of newspaper in my saddlebag. Will this do? I asked. Wonderful, said the driver. Now all we need is a boot lace. I decided to ask one of the passengers. I looked at each one's foot. But shoes these days didn't seem to have boot laces. Until I came to a finely dressed man. You there, I said. Your boot lace is just what we need for this incident. Please may, I, please may you lend it to me. I won't, said the man. 
I, I recoil in shock. Then I defiantly flung back my mane. Then I suppose we'll have to stay here until the matter is taken care of. Sorry, Jamesy, but this man just won't cooperate. When James heard that, he immediately went red. Jamesy? He, he said. No one has called him that in a long time. For that matter, no one called him that ever. I had forgotten what I said because I was too busy listening to the passengers. They were all saying what a bad railway it was. So I had to jump in. It's not the railway's fault. It's the man. He's not generous enough to lend us his bootlace so we can continue our trip. Then the people started talking about how bad he was instead. Rarity, when will you learn to keep your mouth shut? I said to myself. At last the man gave in. He handed me the bootlace. I took it with my magic and tied a neat knot in the brake pipe. James was surprised, but then he remembered what he had learned from Twilight. You use your horn for magic, don't you? Most of the time, I replied. Well, we have to go now, before I get into even more trouble. And so we hurried off. All the way, I tried to talk to him to make him feel a little better about the things I do and how I can tell with different colors from every shade. I mean, you know, shades from every color. After a few days, I had not heard a thing from James. I went back through the portal to a to, to Sodor. When I got to the sheds, I saw poor Jancy looking all alone and sad in the shed. I walked up. I got closer. As I got closer, I could hear James crying. Oh dear, how long will I have to stay in this wretched shed? Will I ever see? Will anyone see my red coat again? Why did I go so fast that I made a hole in one of my coaches? that had to be mended with, of all things, a passenger's bootlace and a newspaper. I felt so bad for James. Who wouldn't? I walked closer to him, close enough for him to see me. When he did, he smiled a little. Hello, Rarity, he said. Hello, Jamesy. He said, I said in my sweetest voice, and I gently patted his, his lamp with my hoof. There, there, surely if, with all this misery, it's not my fault, Rarity. The top of hat made me stay in the sheds for, for days now. I long to be let out again. How horrid, I said. I would hate to be locked up in a shed all day, every day. It would be so horrible. You're telling me, said James. Then we had a car door slam. I was about to yell at Sir Topham Hat, but then I realized that he wasn't looking angry at all. He was looking... Well, I couldn't really tell what his expression was. He walked over to James and said, I, un I understand you are sorry, James. I understand that you want to be let out again. You want to be really useful. People are laughing at my railway and I don't like that at all. And I can see Rarity here always wants to be with you. James, James looked at me through one corner of his eye. A small tear Trickled, de trickled down his gray face. I want to do my best, sir, he said. Oh, you poor, poor, poor little thing. And I gently patted his face with my hoof. And 
just so you know, his face was not hot. It was just the right temperature. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hat. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. James was delighted, and so he built up steam and puffed away. All I could do was, well, trot along after him. At the station, Thomas had, had put together James's freight cars for him. For some reason, Twilight wasn't with him. Thomas explained that Twilight had told him that he, she would be away today. She was helping Princess Celestia with assignments. Here's your freight train, James, said Thomas. Have you got some boot laces ready? And he ran off laughing. James did not like this joke one bit. He explained to me that ever since the incident the other day, the engines had been teasing him endlessly about it. I felt sorry for him. But I thought that bootlace was pretty, was lovely, despite the fact it came from such a greedy man. I, I'm, sa I'm not saying this to tease you, I'm being serious. It had, James had no idea what I just said. Or well, at least he tried to understand. Oh no! said the freight cars. I was surprised. They had faces and they talked. But I wasn't too surprised. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. I did not like this one bit. The only monsters who act like monsters are the ones who are who call others monsters. Sorry about that, Jamesy. They must, mu you must, mu you know. You must ignore them. You are more superior than they will ever be. James looked at me and, ag made, and, and made an agreeing face at me, meaning he knew I was right. He paid no attention to the cars complaining and started up as soon as the conductor was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the freight cars. But James didn't listen. And slowly he pulled the screeching freight cars out of the station. The sound was horrible. Screeching brakes was a horrible noise. I had to put some cotton balls in my ears to keep the sound from hurting. But wait, sometimes, well, it was difficult at first. Sometimes the freight cars let. Sometimes the freight car's brakes would slip on, and sometimes the axles would run hot, and each time the trouble had to be put right. It was stopping and starting, stopping and stopping. At last we were heading into the countryside. Along the way, I occupied J I didn't dare talk to James this time. I knew he was trying to concentrate. So I encouraged him. You can do it, Jamesy. I believe in you. Give up! Give up! Called the freight cars from far back. You can pull us! You can't! He can and he will! I said. That's right, Rarity. I can and I will. Soon we reached Gordon's Hill. I can do it. I can do it, he said. St James started to go faster. I tried to keep up. Soon we were halfway up. I'm doing it! Will the top ever come? I we're nearly there, I said. Then, with a... Then, but little did we know that some of the couplings had snapped 
Half the train was rolling down back down rolling back down the hill. But we didn't notice. We've done it! Hooray! It's easy now, called James. But but his driver shot off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. I looked behind us. He was right. The last few cars were rolling backwards down the hill. The company had somehow snapped. Stop, James! He's right! But at the bottom of the hill, the conductor stopped the cars and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James. What silly things freight cars are, I said. There might have been an accident. Would you like me to help you, said Edward, who had just arrived at the bottom of the hill just as James was coming back down? No, thank you, we said. I said, we both said in unison, we can do it. So, well, well, good luck, Edward cried out. You're both doing wonderful. Now I had my second good opinions about Edward. We kept going. I can do it. I can do it. James said. He pulled and pushed, he pulled and puffed and puffed and pulled as hard as he could. I've done it! I've done it! he cried. Well done, Jamesy! I said. Well done! James was happy. When we got to the station, we stopped by the water tower. James was taking a rest when Edward pulled up. Hello, Rarity. Hello, James, he said. Then James saw Sir Topham's hat. Oh, dear, what will he say? He whispered to me. I don't know, but let's find out what he has to say, at least. Then we noticed Sir Topham's hat was smiling. Well, Rarity, James, I was in Edward's train and I saw the whole thing. You two have made the most troublesome train on the line behave. And for that matter, James, you should keep your red coat permanently. I was so happy I jumped up and down excitedly. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Jamesy? Yes, it is, Rarity. Then I noticed the time. I had to get home. But I will come back tomorrow, James, I promise. Okay, Rarity, I hope to see you very soon. And I hurried as fast as I could back to the portal. But through the corner of my eye, I could see James giving me a wink. And every day I came, I, often, I would often bring some fabric with me in case James did something that didn't involve a pony helping. And so... I would often occupy myself by making clothes. And me and James have grown to love each other more and more. Uh, not the kind of love you would believe. Well, this is my story of how I first met James. I hope you liked it. And sorry about the ongoing music. That that's a difficulty. Well, this is Rarity saying good night, everybody, and get re and get ready for the next story. I'm not sure who'll be telling their story, but it will be some pony. Ciao.